evening, welcome to New Life Online. It's great to have you join us. Whatever kind of week you've had this week, I pray that we lay all aside today and let's focus on Jesus. In just a short time, our youth pastor, Tim, is going to be bringing the word, looking at our We Believe series, continuing through that. But before that, let's just pray this evening. Father, I thank you for your goodness to us. Lord, we thank you that we can come before you with thanksgiving, Lord. That today, Lord, we can bring our gratitude. And Lord, we thank you that you're a God who meets us where we're at, Lord. If we seek you, we will find you. And I pray that whatever we're seeking for today, we will find in you. In Jesus' name, amen.
Hey, let's pray together before we jump in this morning. So, Father, we thank you that we're coming around your word this morning. We thank you for, for what you're doing in church already through our time of worship and through our time of fellowship this morning. And we just pray that, that you would speak through me, that you would share the message that you want to share with our church, with our community today, God. Uh, and we just pray that, that our hearts would be open to what you have to say to all of us in this room. In your name, amen. 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 So this morning, if you're taking notes, uh, which is always good to do, uh, if you're taking notes here in the room or watching online, then the title of today's message is The Good Choice. Uh, you know, in our life, we, we make choices constantly. You know, we'll probably make hundreds of choices throughout our day, uh, big, sometimes small, uh, and it's often only with the benefit of hindsight and looking back that we can see whether something was a good choice or a bad choice. Uh, for example, you know, Good choice, one of the best choices I've ever made was to marry my wife, uh, Rachel. Uh, of course, great choice. Uh, if I don't say that, she'll probably throw something at me. Um, and uh, you know when you get married and you say all your vows and all that kind of stuff, and there's that one in there about, you know, to, to care for and love in sickness and in health, you know that part of the vow? That's a bad choice. Let me just say that now, word of warning. Because of that vow that I made, uh, I'm now stuck with my wife's dumb allergies and living a gluten-free diet, which <laughs> it's terrible. Um, now, in saying that, there are limits to, to how much I'll sacrifice for her because she also has to give up caffeine, and I told her that's too far for me. I'm not giving up my coffee. Um, you know, good choice, bad choice. Good choice, we got a dog during the summer. Um, we love our Obi. Uh, great choice. Although, somehow... I've gone down the pecking order in terms of who his favourites are, because his favourites go Rachel, and then Kirsty, and then me. So I'm not sure how one of the youth has taken over me there, but uh, you know, great choice getting the dog. Bad choice was not considering what it's like walking a dog during the Shetland winter months. Uh, I'm starting to find that out, and I kind of wish that someone had warned me. Um, <laughs> I'm a, I'm a big music fan. I love music. I love going to see gigs, things like that. So when I was younger, about 13, 14, there was this American band that I was a, a big fan of. And, uh, you know, I had all the albums, had the T-shirts. I even had the iPod case from their website. I was so cool. Um, and so when they were saying they were coming to Glasgow to play a gig, of course, I made the good choice. I went and bought tickets with a couple of friends to go see this gig. And it was a really awesome music event from what I've been told, because I made the bad choice right beforehand to destroy two large McDonald's meals, and so spent the entire gig in the bathroom being sick, and then having to miss all my favorite songs from this band, and then come out and have an argument with the security guards and tell them that I, little 14-year-old me, was not in fact drunk, but was just having Ronald McDonald's revenge. <laughs> so, you know, good choices, bad choices. So the, this morning, as we look at this, we're looking at for what many of us would refer to or, or think of as the best choice that we could ever make in our lives. It's the choice of our salvation, the choice of who our Lord is. And we're continuing, as John said, our Statements of Faith series, looking at what we believe as a church and what we believe as, as a movement, as an AOG movement. And so this morning, we're actually looking at two of them together here. And the first one is salvation through faith. And it says, we believe in salvation through faith in Christ, who according to the scriptures died for our sins, was buried and was raised from the dead on the third day. And that through his blood, we have redemption. The second statement says, this, is, this experience is also known as new birth. It is an instantaneous and complete operation of the Holy Spirit upon initial faith in Lord Jesus Christ. So this morning, we're looking at that choice of our salvation, that salvation through faith in Christ. And we're going to read here from Romans 10. And if you're reading along in your Bibles, we're going to read the first 13 verses. So if you've got your paper Bibles, then big props to you for bringing along a paper Bible still. Uh, if you're just on your phone, on the Version app, then uh, turn to Romans 10. Um, as an aside, how awesome is it? I don't know if you saw this week that that Bible app crossed 500 million downloads on phone, which is awesome to see. Um, but we're reading Romans 10 this morning, and it says, Dear brothers and sisters, the longing of my heart and my prayer to God is for the people of Israel to be saved. I know what enthusiasm they have for God, but it is misdirected zeal. 
for they don't understand God's way of making people right with himself. They're refusing to accept God's way, and they cling to their own way of getting right with God by trying to keep the law. But for Christ has already accomplished the purpose for which the law was given, and as a result, all who believe in him are made right with God. Moses writes that the law's way of making a person right with God requires obedience to all of its commandments. But faith's way of getting right with God says, don't say in your heart who will go up to heaven to bring Christ down to earth, and don't say who will go down to the place of the dead to bring Christ back to life again. But in fact, it says the message is very close at hand. It is on your lips and in your heart. And that message is a very message about faith that we preach. And this is the, the verses here that are key for us today is, as a church. It says, if you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. And it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. As the scriptures tell us, anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. Jew and Gentile are the same in this respect. They have the same Lord who gives generously to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Amen. Amen. So, so that passage here, it's from the book of Romans, and I love the book of Romans. Uh, for me, it's one of my favorite books of the Bible because it talks so well about the gospel, about what the gospel is, and really breaks it down. Paul's writing here and really breaks down uh, the, the intricacies of the gospel. And it comes at an interesting point in the Bible, just where we read it in our books, because we've got the Old Testament telling the story of everything God's done and his people and his creation. We then read the Gospels, the four Gospels, about Jesus being kind of this pinnacle of everything, that everything is pointing to Jesus. And then we have the book of Acts, almost like a history book, talking about the impact that Jesus had and what his disciples did and the, the formation of the church and how his Gospels spread throughout the world. And then we come to the book of Romans, the first of Paul's letters. And here he's really talking about what is the gospel? What does it mean for us? What does it mean to be saved? And in this passage in Romans 10 that we read here, what Paul is addressing to the Roman church is he's addressing particularly the Jewish culture at the time and that community and the, the importance of the law of Moses. And we talk about the law of Moses, it's what we find in Exodus and Deuteronomy, Leviticus and Numbers, think the Ten Commandments type stuff. And so what, Mo, uh, what uh, Paul is talking about here is that we no longer have our salvation through that law, but we have salvation through Jesus alone, through Christ alone. See, for the Jewish people, there's this importance in the law because it's what God gave to his people as an identifier, a way to identify as God's people, but also as a way that we can be holy before God. Now, the problem for us is that because we sin, we all fall short of that. We can't meet that mark. And so Jesus, he is the fulfillment of this law. This passage in Romans, it, it talks about Jesus accomplishing the purpose for which the law was given. That this standard for holiness that we can't meet, that means that because we don't meet it, we can't come before God. We have to instead sacrifice before him, that Jesus is that ultimate sacrifice. He is that atonement, meaning that we can come through our faith in Jesus, we can come before God as we are, as people that are deemed holy by God. It doesn't matter that, that we can't meet the law 100% of the time. It doesn't matter our, our law score of, of how many times we've met it, how many times we've failed. If we know Jesus, if we, if we come before him, that we repent for our sins, that we can come before God as we are as holy people. And so the law, it's not the requirement that we have to meet now. But that's not to say that the law of Moses, that it's irrelevant or that it's outdated or that it's no longer important, that we can just ignore it. Because the law was, was given, yes, partly for the requirements to come before God, but also as an identifier of being God's people. And so we come through Jesus to God, that the law is still there for us as a way to to be identified as God's people. You know, in, when the law was first given to the nation of Israel, to his people, it was so countercultural for the time. Even the things that we think today are really basic and really obvious and the things we think are a bit weird and out there, at the time, they didn't fit in at all with the rest of the cultures and nations around them. And it made other people look on and say, who are those people? Who is their God? I want to know more. And for us today, it's the same. 
the law and that identity should be our response. That Jesus talks about this when the Pharisee comes before him and, and says, what's the most important commandment that we have to follow? And Jesus says, the first is to love God and the second is to love your neighbour. And so as we love God, as we come through Jesus, through his sacrifice, his death on the cross and his resurrection, as we come before God as holy people and we see the love he has for us, the love he has for all people, then our natural response should be, yes, to love him and also to love his people. The, probably the most well-known verse in the Bible, John 3.16, it talks about how God so loved the world. And that's not God so loved the few people who attend church on a Sunday or the few people who know him, but it's God loved the whole world. Our God made a way for all people to come to know him because he loves his whole creation so much. So our response to the love of God that we know should be that we love others in the same way. And I guess a big question that maybe our culture is really asking at the moment and, and is really important for us to, to address and to look at and be talking about is why do we even need salvation? Why do we need Jesus? You know, maybe you've had conversations with people about your faith and they're like, yeah, that's cool for you. You can have your faith, but I don't really need it. I'm quite happy where I'm at. I've got a good job. I've got a happy family. Life's going good for me. I've got a nice big house. I've got everything I want. I'll maybe think about my faith way down the line or it's just not really for me. But if we can be real today, if we can be honest, then eternity is real. We're all going somewhere after our time here on earth. The Bible is clear on heaven and hell. And, you know, that idea that we have when we, we talk about heaven and hell, we get a lot of pop culture things of, you know, sitting on a cloud with a harp and our halos playing nice little orchestral music or being with fire and chains and an angry red guy with a pitchfork and a tail. And, you know, that's our kind of pop culture idea. And maybe it's not like that. We, we're going to look at this in a future week when John's going to share a message with us around this a bit more. But the Bible is very clear that we are saved through Jesus and through Jesus alone and that when we are saved through him, when, as this verse we read earlier says, when we declare with our mouths that we are Lord, that declare with our mouths that he is Lord and believe in our hearts he is raised from the dead, we are saved through him and we will then spend eternity in heaven with our God with our God who loves us so much, an eternity where there's no pain, there's no suffering, there's no sadness, there's no sin. You know, I've been watching some of the Marvel stuff recently and their Marvel movies are kind of going into this thing at the moment of these alternate realities and alternate timelines and things like that. And maybe for sometimes that's kind of what we think of heaven being like this alternate dimension or this ultimate alternate reality where we could almost like break through if we just tried hard enough. But what the Bible talks about is that heaven is God's perfect creation, the creation that he made in its most perfect form with no sin, with no weakness, with no failure. And so, of course, that that's where we want to spend our eternity, that that's where we want to spend our time with our loving Father. But if we could be real and honest today, the Bible is clear that there is an alternative, that if we're not saved through him, if we're not acknowledging who Jesus is as Lord, then by default, we're choosing the alternative. And that alternative is an eternity away from God. It's an eternity away from his perfect creation. You know, we don't like preaching about this idea of being away from God or about hell in today's culture because we're worried about scaring people off. You know, gone are the days of being the, the preacher down the street preaching about fire and brimstone and how you must turn or you'll burn with your megaphone. Those days are gone, and, and probably rightfully so, but, but it's not just some crazy Facebook conspiracy used to scare people into joining some cult or weird club or anything like that. That this eternity away from God, it's real, and it's a real option if we're not choosing to declare he is Lord. Uh, in Deuteronomy 30, there's this passage, this verse, where God's speaking through Moses to his people and it's in the midst of giving his law and giving all these commandments for his nation. And God says to his people, today I have given you the choice between life and death, between blessings and curses. Now I call on heaven and earth to witness the choice that you make. Oh, that you would choose life so that you and your descendants might live. 
And I love that, that this is God speaking to his people in the midst of all this law saying to choose life, to choose blessing. And now for us today as we look at that through the context of Jesus, through the choice that we can make to declare Jesus is Lord, that God is encouraging us, God is urging us to choose life to choose blessing, to choose him. You know, today that this, this choice that we can make, it's not just about our eternity. It's not just about our eternal salvation. It's a choice to invite Jesus into our lives today. The part we read, the second statement of faith, talking about new birth. It's talking about a transformation of the Holy Spirit uh, it says the operation of the Holy Spirit upon initial faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And when we make that declaration, for some people here, we maybe we can think of that time we first made a commitment to God, we first chose to invite Jesus into our life, and that there was something powerful that maybe happened. Maybe it was a physical reaction, maybe an emotional reaction, maybe just something within you, it, it swelled and, and filled you up inside, that, that there is this transformation that happens in that moment because... Jesus isn't just some kind of uh, pension scheme or retirement plan or I'll, I guess I'll invite Jesus into my life for when my time on earth is done and then I've got that back up there. But actually Jesus wants to be in our lives today. He wants relationship with us. And that means being in our daily lives. We talk sometimes about, uh, about our faith and about having Jesus in our everyday ordinary life, in our sleeping, our eating, our walking around, going to work, everyday ordinary life. This choice to choose Jesus, to, to accept him as our Lord, to believe he raised from the dead and to, to declare it, it's to allow our lives to be guided by him, to be blessed and supported by the Holy Spirit. We talk about how God has these plans and purposes for us as individuals and as God's group of people. It's about choosing God for now and forever. Sometimes we get so caught up on that forever part that we kind of forget the now. There's a challenge for all of us today, whether we're just coming to know Jesus for the first time or whether we've known him our whole life, that, that are we inviting Jesus into our daily lives or do we just see God as some kind of retirement plan? This choice that we make we're choosing a God that loves us. I'm going to invite the band to come up here just now. And I want to encourage you to think about that choice today, about whether you've made that choice for God. You know, I'm not here this morning to convince you. This isn't a sales pitch. This isn't some sign-up message, trying to sign up for some club or, or anything like that. I'm just here this morning to point you in the right direction. When I was preparing this message, uh, I was actually, to be honest, challenged at this at first of well, how do I share something that is so simple for what many of us already believe? But this morning, I just, I believe that God just wants to challenge all of us, regardless of where maybe you feel you stand your faith, to challenge us on where we stand with that choice, where we stand with that declaration that we make of our faith, of his lordship, of his resurrection? Where do we stand with that today? You know, that statement of faith, it's powerful because it says we believe in salvation through faith in Christ. And that's it. There's no alternatives. There's no alternatives to that. It doesn't matter how good a person you are. There's no score that God is keeping track of that if you're good enough, you'll go to heaven. It's only through Jesus, only through declaring he is Lord. You know, we're not perfect people. All of us are going to have our moments where we make mistakes or we sin, we mess up. But through the sacrifice of Jesus, we can come before him. And there's that statement, as it's got no alternatives, the exciting thing about it is there's also no exceptions. It's not we believe in faith through Jesus, please see terms and conditions. Please see the asterisks below. Please see subsection 1.2, etc. There's no exceptions. There's no discrimination. It doesn't matter your age, your gender, your race, your political view, how long you've been a Christian, where you come from, how well you can speak, your social standing. None of that matters. All that matters is do you declare that he is Lord and believe in your heart that he raised you from the dead? See, when we do that, we make that declaration, when we have that belief so sure in our heart, 
that the Holy Spirit in that moment transforms our lives. He transforms us to being God's people. And we talked earlier about our response should be, should be the law and loving God and loving others. But it's a powerful thing God does within us. His Holy Spirit empowers us, gives his gifts to us. So I ask you this morning, where is your soul? Are you sitting in this room this morning knowing with 100% certainty that my soul is saved? My name is written in the book of life and I'm going to see my Father in heaven. Are you sitting here with that certainty today? Maybe you feel this morning that actually your soul it feels a bit broken. Maybe you've made that decision, you, you believe that, that Jesus is Lord, but you still feel your soul's broken. You feel hurt. Maybe you've walked away from God. Maybe you, you're urged to come back to him. Maybe you feel actually this morning that your soul, it's actually just given away, that the core of who you are, it's empty, that there's nothing left inside of you, that you just feel a bit like a shell. Maybe because of past hurt, past relationships, maybe because of a situation that happened in your life that maybe wasn't even in your control, that you just feel that your, your soul's empty, your soul's broken. Well, let me tell you this morning, you can't lose your soul, you can't give away your soul, you can't sell your soul, nothing like that. The core of who you are, your utmost being, that when we declare that Jesus is Lord, we believe in our heart that we are saved, that that's what Jesus comes into our life. He restores us. He brings us back to wholeness, to holiness. Our band's going to lead us in a song here in a moment. It's an amazing song about the gospel, about who Jesus is, and, and declaring exactly that, that he's Lord and that he's risen from the dead. And as our band's going to lead us, you know, during our our time the last couple of years through all this COVID stuff that when we started coming out of it we were meeting together in church that we all went through the, the frustrating couple of months where we're in church but we couldn't sing and some weeks it was particularly awful when the band would choose a great song like an old hymn or something we all just wanted to really get involved and, and start belting it out but actually one of the, the best things through that time that I found personally and I think many others shared was it forced us all to not just do the Christian karaoke, but actually just reflect, to spend time in God's presence, to just be with him, to come before his cross and just fall at his feet. And so as our band's going to lead us this morning, we're actually just going to spend time reflecting, reflecting on where we are today, where we stand with that choice. Are we saved today? Do we know with 100% certainty that we are saved? Do we feel broken? Do we feel empty? Do we need to come back before Jesus this morning? Do we maybe need to, for the first time in a while, re-declare that he is Lord, re-declare that he has risen from the dead, re-commit our lives to him? I'm going to come back up in a bit and, and help us, give us that choice for maybe those who haven't made that choice for the, before or to come back to him. But as we spend time in worship here, you don't have to wait for me to tell you what to say or wait for me to, to lead you in a prayer. That right now in this moment, just cry out to your Father, the Father who loves you so much. You know, that verse in Romans, it, it goes on after that bit we read and it talks about how will people know if they have not heard. And so maybe this morning there's an urge on your heart for people in your life, your family, your friends, who maybe haven't heard the good news, haven't heard the gospel, or maybe you're still waiting for them to come to know God, will spend this time, I would urge you, to pray for them, to pray that God would stir something inside them in their world. And so as our band leads us, let's reflect. Where do we stand on that choice? Where do we stand on that declaration that he is Lord? I fix my eyes upon the cross. I'm reaching out with all I've got I'm letting go to start again I need your love, that's why I'm here Waiting outside my life in calls So while I'm here I'll give my heart are my peace within the storm Here 
here at the cross I find my You are greater, Jesus, you are greater than it all. You are greater, Jesus, you are greater than it all, than it all. Grace and mercy found me, oh, the blood of Jesus. Is greater. Grace and mercy found me. Oh, the blood of Jesus is greater. Lord, I believe you rose again. So I don't believe this is the end. The New Life News, here's what's coming up this week. On a Sunday morning, we have our prayer, which is free to drop in and out of at Sandview Neighbourhood Centre. On a Sunday morning at 11 am, we have our Sunday service. This is a really good chance to worship together as a church. Every Sunday at 5 pm, our online service is posted to YouTube. Why not subscribe to our New Life Shet and Live Streams channel to stay up to date? We, of course, have our half hour prayer word on a Monday at 7 pm. This is a brilliant opportunity to pray alongside other people. Now here's this month's youth programme. Starting the 2nd of November, we have our Unite Bible Study in Tim and Rachel's flat every second week. Every Thursday at 7.30pm in the Sydney Hill Hall, we have our youth club. This includes lots of games and fun. The first Sunday of every month, we have our youth cafe. This is a great chance for the youth to learn about God in a way that's relative to them. If you want to learn anything more about our youth programme, DM us on our NL Youth Instagram page or message Tim or Rachel. Our life groups are back in November. Through this we'll be learning how to study the Bible and get the most out of our devotions. After school on a Wednesday we have our kids club. It goes from 4 to 5.30 and is a great opportunity for kids to make new friends and have lots of fun. 
Hi ladies, it's been a while since we've had a chosen event and Christmas is coming up, so we thought it would be really good to get together. We're stealing the men's idea and we're going to have a curry night on Sunday the 28th of November. If you'd like to come, then please give your name to Helen before Wednesday the 17th of November and when we get numbers we'll be able to confirm which restaurant it's going to be and what time. So we hope you can come, please sign up today, thanks. Good morning friends. In the past we've asked people in the fellowship to buy food and bring it along to Coys on the Christmas Eve afternoon or, or New Year's Eve afternoon but last year due to Covid, last Christmas New Year period and again this year as Covid is still with us uh, we're encouraging people in the fellowship who'd like to support this, this work which is very much appreciated in the local community for the last 27 years to actually give money rather than buy food. So if you'd like to do that then please have a word with your owner as church treasurer and either give her cash uh, in an envelope, perhaps mark Christmas meals, or alternatively get from Rona the bank account details, and then if you want to do it by a straight uh, backs transfer uh, from your account to the church account, that would be very helpful. But we'd be grateful for help in other ways as well. We need four people to help with veg preparation uh, on the eve of the day. We need four people to help dish the meals up and clean up. We need eight drivers and helpers. There will be lists available at the back of the Sambine Hall uh, this this Sunday and so if you could please seriously consider this uh, and then sign up appropriately and the list will be there for several weeks but we would really like to know where we're going if we could please by the end of November. Thank you very much and uh, look forward to working with you all. Thank you. On the first Sunday in December we're going to have a church baptismal service. Baptismal services are always a great celebration and if you've not been baptised then why not think about following that command of Jesus, talking to myself and going through the waters of baptism. This one is going to take place in the sea. So last time we had it in Sandine, but this time we're going to take it's going to take place in the sea. So if you're keen, then please do talk to myself. We'll talk through about what it means and it'll be an exciting day. We'd love you to be part of that. Any more information on any of the events I said today, please contact us at admin at newlifeshetland.com or on any of our social medias. But that's all for now. Have a great week. Thanks for joining us at New Life Online this evening. We pray that this service has been a blessing to you. If we can be of any help, then contact us at admin at newlifeshetland.com if it's an administration thing or at pastor at newlifeshetland.com if we can help in any way pastorally. We'll be back same time, same place next week, five o'clock on YouTube, but also in person at Sanveen at 11 a.m. We'd love you to join with us. Have a great week.